Hey guys, what's up? My name's Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. Let's talk about the Apple Watch Series 6. So the next Apple event is scheduled for September 15th, and that is only four days away. Now, Apple is likely to announce several different products and software updates and all of that, but what I wanna specifically talk about in this video is the Apple Watch Series 6, which has all been but confirmed that they will be announcing at the September 15th event. So specifically what I wanna talk about here in this video is what are we expecting to get from the Apple Watch Series 6? What has been pretty much confirmed? What is a maybe? And what are some things that maybe we kind of hope to see from Apple on the new Series 6? Well, let's just go ahead and talk about what's virtually guaranteed. Uh, it's virtually guaranteed to have an improved processor. Um, Apple almost never releases a new product, whether that's an Apple Watch, a phone, a tablet, a computer, whatever it may be, without also updating the processing power of that device. Uh, specifically with, with the Apple Watch, we've seen each and every year modest improvements to processing power. Usually nothing like super significant, but we have seen increases each and every year. And so it's very likely that we're going to see an improvement in processing power on the new Apple Watch Series 6 that's just kind of a guaranteed each and every year. In addition to that, what we're also likely to see is less power consumption from this processor. So not only will it be more powerful, it will also consume less battery power. Uh, and so in theory, another thing that we're kind of guaranteed to see is improved battery life. And this kind of just makes sense because in order for the Apple Watch to remain relevant moving forward at this point, they need to compete with all of the hundreds of other fitness trackers that are out on the market that have minimum two, three days worth of battery life. In some cases now we're getting minimum five to seven days worth of battery life. And so for the Apple Watch to remain relevant, they really have to address the battery issue that um, they've had ever since the beginning where you're really only getting about one day worth of battery life. And so uh, it's likely that Apple will uh, address this issue and maybe give us a day and a half, two days worth of battery life out of the Apple Watch now, we will see. Uh, but it's likely that it, at the very least, we're going to get a new processor that's a little bit faster, that consumes a little bit less energy, and then therefore we also get extended battery life. So for the Apple Watch Series 5, last year's generation, uh, we really didn't see a whole lot of improvements in terms of health and fitness. Um, we did not get any sort of updated heart rate sensor. In fact, upon release, the Series 5, uh, per my testing and a lot of other uh, fitness channels testing was actually less accurate than the Series 4, likely because they were delivering less power to the sensor. Uh, Apple uh, did go ahead and address that concern, that issue with a firmware update. So the Series 5 essentially had the exact same heart rate sensor as the Series 4. I don't actually see that changing for the Series 6. Uh, I think that the Series 6 is probably going to have the exact same optical heart rate sensor on the wrist as the Series 5. Um, you know, I wish that they would improve it, obviously, but I don't think that Apple necessarily feels compelled to do so at this given point in time, because even to this day, the Apple optical heart rate sensor still remains as one of the most accurate, one of the best sensors uh, uh, in terms of accuracy on the market compared to a lot of the other competition. The other comp, all of the other, uh, you know, watches and fitness and health uh, companies that are out there that are making wearables are still kind of playing catch up in regards to the accuracy of their on wrist optical sensors. And Apple is still, even with the Series 5 being about a year old now, still the king in terms of accuracy when it comes to heart rate uh, tracking. Uh, so I don't really think that Apple is under any sort of pressure this year to improve upon uh, their design and their accuracy of the optical heart rate sensor. So we didn't see that uh, last year. And we also didn't really see any other uh, serious updates. We got a, a built-in compass. Um, and so that was kind of cool that you know makes it a little bit more accurate in terms of GPS tracking and directional tracking. 
tracking. So that was nice to see. We got an always on display, which is certainly nice. Uh, if you're running, you don't have to wait for the screen to turn on uh, in order to see your metrics. It's just kind of always on. So we've got the always on display um, and we've got a, a compass and that's really all we got last year in terms of health and fitness features, if you want to call them that. Uh, and so this year we're probably going to see a few more health and fitness features that they're going to definitely try to highlight. I don't know that they're going to be materially that significant. So let me go ahead and talk about what I think they're going to do and why I don't necessarily think it's that big of a deal. Sleep tracking. So that's probably going to be the big feature that the Apple Watch Series 6 adds this year. Sleep tracking. Now, within the Apple Watch health applications, they've had now for several years uh, a, a category for sleep tracking metrics, but you essentially had to sync an external third party device, for example, like the Aura Ring with their Apple health kit, you know, uh, apps and import that data into the Apple ecosystem. So if you wanted sleep tracking, Apple provided you with the software infrastructure to do so, but they didn't give you the hardware on the watch to do so. You had to rely on a third party uh, you know, manufacturer to develop something that had sleep tracking built in. The Apple Watch did not provide that. Uh, or another method if you wanted sleep tracking on the Apple Watch is you know, a third party application. And there have been some great third party applications that have done sleep tracking via the Apple Watch and they've done pretty well with them. They've, they're, you're able to calibrate the accuracy and really kind of dial in um, accurate sleep metrics with third party applications. Apple is trying to basically, you know, squeeze out potentially some of those competitors by providing native sleep tracking to the Apple Watch Series 6. Here's why that's not really a big deal in my opinion. You can already get a host of applications that provide sleep tracking. And additionally, it's like this is 2020 and Apple is just now doing sleep tracking. Um, like where have they been? Uh, there has been sleep tracking on most fitness trackers now for like the last four or five years, maybe more than that. And Apple is just now getting caught up. And I, I don't know that it's that significant for people to necessarily ha feel like they have to upgrade from a previous Apple Watch device to the Series 6 just because now Apple offers, you know, sleep tracking built in. Um, you can rely on third party applications that are really, really good. And so if you already have a setup like I do with the Apple Watch Series 5 with third party sleep tracking capabilities, I just don't think that Apple offering sleep tracking is going to be enough for people to go spend the money to upgrade to the new watch just to get native sleep tracking when they already have it now with third party applications that they really enjoy. So I just don't know that that's a compelling enough reason, health and fitness reason for people to upgrade from current generation Apple watches to the new series six. That said, there are people out there that just want Apple to do a lot of the heavy lifting for them. They don't want to have to worry about setting up third party applications. They don't want to have to worry about, you know, uh, relying on other ecosystems to talk nice with the Apple applications. They just want something that is built in. And so for them, it makes a lot of sense. You know, they're going to upgrade because they just want one source of or one watch, one source of health and fitness tracking, you know, hardware to just kind of populate all of the metrics in the health and fitness app that they're using. So I'm not saying it's bad that Apple, um, you know, is including sleep tracking here in the Apple Watch Series 6. It's just kind of like you're a little late to the party. Quick side note, the fact that Apple is going to be including sleep tracking on the new Apple Watch Series 6 also lends itself to kind of verify the battery life because it doesn't seem like Apple would include native sleep tracking on a watch that only got about 18 hours worth of battery life, basically one day's worth of battery life. It seems like it would make a lot more sense that Apple would only release that feature 
if they're providing us with a watch that can actually, you know, go on your wrist in the morning and then last a whole 24 hours through the night before you throw it on the charger in the morning while you're taking a shower or something like that. So it's very unlikely that Apple would release sleep tracking capabilities and not improve battery life. That would just make absolutely no sense. So it's, again, the fact that they're releasing the sleep tracking, it's good, better late than never, I guess. And it's also a sign that Apple is going to improve the battery life. So again, two wins there. Um, I feel like still they're catching up in terms of battery life and sleep tracking, but it's good to see that they're at least catching up. Now, in the maybe category, there are rumors that the new Apple Watch Series 6 will include blood oxygen saturation, uh, basically giving you a percentage reading of how much oxygen is going through your blood. I don't know if you've ever seen kind of like those little things you stick on the end of your finger that shine a light inside and they measure your blood oxygen saturation levels. Um, they've been kind of popular ever since COVID-19. They've been sold out just about everywhere. Well, Apple is thinking about uh, incorporating that feature in the new Apple Watch Series 6. Now, whether or not it will actually show up on this generation watch or it, you know, or whether it will show up for the Series 7, I don't know. There's just rumors out there that it will have blood oxygen saturation levels. Now, I find that helpful. Um, I, I really do uh, like the idea of Apple including, um, you know, passive metrics or, or recovery metrics. Uh, what I would really hope to see more than even like blood oxygen saturation levels uh, is a really accurate heart rate variability uh, score or reading from Apple. It would be great if Apple would include uh, native recovery metrics like heart rate variability uh, or some kind of stress score natively within their app. Uh, they haven't really done that and you've got those kinds of readings from Fitbit and from Polar and from Garmin and from virtually every other competitor. So rather than doing blood oxygen saturation levels, I really wish that the Apple Watch would natively do something about recovery metrics like heart rate variability, but we'll see what we get. There are also rumors that Apple could be releasing two different versions of the Apple Watch Series 6. Yes and no. What's likely to happen is for them to take an older version of the Apple Watch, like the Apple Watch Series 3 or the Series 4, and to provide some sort of maybe processing or modest upgrade to the watch and then sell it at a lower price point. So it's likely that you're gonna have kind of, you know, the higher tier Series 6, the expensive one with all of the updates, all of the feature, all of the new hardware, and then they're gonna have a rebranded uh, version of a previous Apple Watch, again, a Series 3, Series 4, I don't know, uh, but they'll have a, a a, a new version of that that's kind of been rebranded with maybe an upgrade or two that at a cheaper price point for those that don't want to pay, you know, the $399 or $450 or $500 or whatever, you know, variant you buy of the new Apple Watch. So uh, I would guess that they'll probably release an Apple Watch, uh, a new Apple Watch, some sort of Series 6 or um, or a, some sort of cheap version of the Series 6 that... Um, rings in anywhere from like $199 to $299 new, just something at a cheaper price point uh, for those of you who don't necessarily feel like you need the latest and greatest, but also don't have an Apple Watch yet and maybe want to jump in on the Apple Watch ecosystem at a budget price point. Um, and so I think we're likely to see kind of two versions of the Apple Watch get announced. Their, you know, premium latest and greatest version, and then a rebranded kind of modestly upgraded version of a previous generation Apple Watch. Uh, so we'll see if that if those rumors are true, but that's kind of uh, one of the likely rumors that are also milling around right now. So that's about it. Let me know in the comments below if you're looking forward to the Apple Watch Series 6, or if there's something else kind of on your radar, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on all of this. Hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.